Hey everybody, um, I wanted to jump on here because a lot of you saw my community post obviously over the weekend and so many of you guys commented and you know extended your well wishes, you had some questions. So I told you guys I would come back up on with a follow up video to that post just to kind of let you guys know what happened. And for those of you who missed the community post, I'll just kind of give you guys a brief rundown. So my husband and I were driving down in Palm Springs on Saturday, which is about a two hour drive from where we live. So I want to say that because a lot of people in the comments were suggesting that perhaps it's what happened was because this person recognized me or we were targeted for some reason, but we were two hours from where we live and nobody would have known that that's where we were. Anyhow, we were driving in the Palm Springs area and when we exited Washington, we were driving along Washington, um, I don't know what direction you would say, I, towards 42nd Avenue, if you're familiar with the area. And this truck had pulled up behind us and started tailgating us very, very closely. So my husband went to kind of like move over, get over to the next lane, but as he went, and this guy like followed him over. So my husband like jerked back and came back into the lane. So then as we're driving, he comes alongside of us. I'm like trying to show you with my hands. He comes alongside of us and he like, sorbs into us and not hitting us but almost like trying to run us off the road and just kind of like screw with us and like scare us so he like swerves into us and then like we correct back here and so i tell my husband i tell jerem like slow down this guy's obviously crazy he's like a lunatic just slow down so we slow down and we're behind him and this is him he starts slowing down and we had cars behind us so we couldn't come to a full stop yet but we were braking then as he's slowing down next to us we pull up alongside of him his window is down and he's pointing a gun directly at my husband and I. Um, and it was a handgun. I mean, I remember it was so vividly. Black handgun, huge circle barrel. He, his face was just, it's like something I'll never forget. He looked so mean. And the way I describe him, I think he was Hispanic. My husband thinks he might have been Middle Eastern. He had very dark features. I'm Middle Eastern myself, and but I didn't, rec I didn't think he was. But um, he had dark hair, dark beard. I, I describe him too as looking like um, a bit like Benicio, Benicio del Toro in um, Sicario. Like just, he had a very, you know, kind of dark presence about him. And I mean that dark as far as like his soul and his energy. And he had a, he wasn't laughing. He wasn't smiling, like trying to screw with us or scare us. He had a serious, mean, mad, scary face and was just pointing the gun at us. And at that point, it felt like forever, obviously. It was probably five seconds maybe, which actually is a really long time to just hold a gun on somebody. Like, you know, that one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. Like, that's a long time. And when I saw it, as we had pulled up to him, I immediately, like, melted into my seat in the passenger side to where, like, my back was literally parallel with the seat bottom where my butt was. Um, and as I melted down, I'm like hitting Jerem, like, get down, get down, get down. He has a gun, he has a gun. And my husband's reaction was just, he kind of just like threw his hands up and was just kind of like, you know, looked at him. I was like, whoa, 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 which, and like, I think we were both in shock. And then so after he, thank God he doesn't shoot, but then he s cuts us off and speeds off in front of us. And it happened so fast, you guys, that to answer some of your questions, I did not get a license plate number. Now, First of all, I think that there were a few reasons why I did it because I think I was in shock and obviously so much was happening. But also, we drive a Tesla. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Teslas, they have built-in cameras into them. And so I had assumed as this was happening that we would be able to pull the footage after. Well, the problem with that is a Tesla camera, it uses a USB in the glove compartment and ours wasn't plugged in at the time. We had unplugged it to put a phone charger in its place. So we didn't get the footage. So I think in my mind, I thought we would, and that's maybe why I wasn't paying attention to the license plate, but it was a dark maroon burgundy Dodge Ram, a newer one, a four door. So after he cuts us off and speeds back ahead, there's a red light ahead. And so I tell my husband, like, don't keep going because I don't want him to either catch up. I don't want to be like at the red light stopped with him. I don't want him to follow us. So I was like, just turn, just turn. And like, we, so we just took a bunch of random turns trying to kind of like get lost in this residential area so that this person couldn't find us. So we called the police and gave them the full report, exactly what had happened. And they said, you know, because we didn't have the license plate, it might be harder to find them. And I said, well, you know what? He stopped at the red light at 42nd. Can you pull traffic footage? And he said that they don't have any cameras on the street, which I think is kind of crazy. And so then um, 
I, he said, you know, if we find him, do you want him arrested? Would you be able to recognize him? I was like, absolutely, I'd be able to recognize him. And then I asked him, like, I'm just curious, though, what could you arrest him for since he didn't fire the weapon? And if he has a conceal and carry, like, what charges could those be? And he said it would be for brandishing a firearm or a handgun or whatever, which is basically like threatening to use it in a harm in a threatening way. And he said in California, depending on the circumstances, that could be a misdemeanor or a felony. And my biggest thought was like, of course, I'm happy we're okay. And thank God the kids aren't with us. But this person seemed so unpredictable that I was worried he was going to do it to somebody else and possibly shoot the next time. Because... There was no road rage at all. We never honked at him when he tried to swerve into us. We never like flipped him off when he was tailgating us. It was just somebody who was unhinged and unprovoked and did this. Um, so we were obviously very shaken up for a while. We're okay, thank goodness. But it's one of those things where, you know, you'll never get that image out of your mind. I am extremely thankful that our kids weren't with us and that nothing happened where they had to get a horrible call about something happening. Um... But there were a lot of questions on here, not only about the license plate, but if I filed a report. So yes, of course I did file a, a report immediately and I apologize, I should have included that in my post. And then I had a couple of random trolls obviously asking like, if you didn't post the license plate in here, you're probably lying or you're doing this for clout. Let me just tell you, if I had to lie about a situation like this for clout, I would kick my own ass. Like, and there were literally, I think only like two or three people who accused me of that, but like, and it's just trolls being trolls, but like, People, I don't know people who would make stories up like that, honestly. And unfortunately, apparently you guys do. Um, and I had heard that this had been happening to a couple of other creators out there. But again, I don't think this was targeted because there's no way anybody could have known that I was down there. Um, but I saw something happen to Sloan and I'm glad he's okay. But that's equally terrifying what he went through as well. And it just is a reminder, I think, for everybody out there to be careful. We are obviously living in a country that is very divided right now. And there's a lot of anger and hostility and hate out there. I'm not going to get started on gun laws because I just, I don't want this to erupt into something like that. But, you know, everybody is free at this point to make their choice if they want to be a gun owner or not. But we are in a country that is divided and there's a lot of violence. And I don't know if guns are the answer to help guns. If it's not, I don't know what the answer is. And I'm not going to pretend to even know. All I know is we were terrified in that moment. It's my belief if we had pulled our own gun out, which we don't have one. and we Or we didn't have one in the car, I should say. Um, I think it would have escalated the issue and made it 20 times worse. I think that it could have been a shootout. I think it could have, he could have felt, the person could have felt threatened. Like, I don't, it could have been worse. It's, that's my opinion. I 100% could be wrong. Um, but I feel like we had the best possible outcome for what situation happened with us. So anyways, I saw some of your questions, so I want to come on here and answer those. They have not caught the guy. Um, I don't know that they will, because again, all I could tell them was the make and model of the car, the color, that it was California plates, a description of the guy. He also was wearing um, one of those like, black and white, not bandanas, but like one of those kind of like tactical scarves with like the fringe where you wear it in the desert, but also people wear it, you know, um, I think in the service as well. But um, just an angry person. I'm hopeful they'll find him and I'm hopeful he doesn't do this to anybody else. But if you live in the Palm Springs area, be extra careful, be on the lookout for that. If you know who this person is, slide into my email and tell me so I can forward it to the police. And if you're a Tesla owner, Go in your glove box right now and make sure that that little black USB thing is plugged into the port and then it will be recording all of the time and all the cameras around you. That's, you know, looking back, it's, I just wish that we had had that recorded because who knows, it might save a life somewhere out there and I had no idea it was unplugged. But we're safe and that's what's important here. Shaking up still. Um, it's been a little tough for my husband and myself, I think, getting sleep because it was just like we, you know, the guy, we just keep seeing it over and over because he was so close to us and it was just pointed at us for such a long period of time. Um, but we're okay. So anyways, I want to come on here and answer all those questions like I promised I would. And if you have more questions, I'm happy to answer those too. But I just wanted to share this story, not for any sort of sympathy, for attention, nothing more than to just remind everybody to be safe out there. I am admittedly one of the worst offenders when I'm driving. And if somebody cuts me off or is tailgating or going too slow, I lay on my horn, I honk, sometimes I'll flip people up. Like I, I don't have crazy road rage, but I react. And this was such a good reminder not to do that, not to react and to just let that person cut you off, 
let that person speed in front of you. Do whatever it is because you don't know who that driver is and what they're capable of or what is in their hand at the time. And so that's my main purpose for sharing this with you guys, just to be aware, always be mindful and be kind to each other because I don't think we can ask for more kindness in this world right now. We need it. We desperately need it with everything going on and everybody is just divided. It seems like no matter what your opinion is, there's an opposing opinion out there. Opinion out there. So I just hope that everybody remains kind to each other, give each other grace when needed and um, stay safe and stay aware guys. And thank you for letting me share you with you this story and from my um, from the floor in my son's room. So <laughs> I hope you guys all have a great week. I hope you had a happy long weekend and everybody's doing well out there. We're all still on verdict watch for this Johnny Depp and Amber Heard thing. Um, hope, I think we're going to get the verdict today. I think that they're probably going to come to the decision this afternoon, probably then decide on damages. And then I think we'll get it by end of day, maybe early tomorrow. That's just my prediction, but we'll see. All right, guys, I will come back on here very soon with you with back to our true crime content, because we have got a lot in the queue to talk about. All right. So until the next time, guys, stay safe and I will talk to you later. Bye.